Hi there and welcome to this video made by a complete but an enthusiastic newbie. Well, I was a complete newbie not so long time ago. And if you log into my YouTube account, you can watch the 20 something videos I have uploaded, oh, uploaded so far. <coughs> you will find the link below in this blog post. The first advice I will give away is 100% personal and it's probably breaking the common rule on YouTube. It's about presenting yourself. After watching a lot of videos made by real authorities in the industry, they all make an appealing intro and then after a while they present themselves. I prefer to let my name pop up on the screen after a couple of seconds, like you can see right now. And I do that for some reasons. First, my Swedish name isn't that easy to memorize by the English-speaking audience. And if it is in writing, the chances are bigger they will capture my name. Secondly, my name and title is part of my brand, TVD, that you can see wherever I'm promoting and publishing my articles and videos. When I started to dig into the video world, I learned quite soon that there are five important cornerstones to think about when making your videos. It's picture, light, sound, editing and uploading or publishing. Let's start with the picture. At the end of the day, it's your creativity that will be mandatory for how the picture will look like. You have 10 seconds to make an impact and you need to do something that will grab your attention. It doesn't have to be overworked and very sophisticated things. Just to let the camera zoom in can be sufficient. Do you remember the first seconds of this video? Try to vary the images as it can be quite annoying to watch your face for a longer time. After all, most of us are not any movie stars from Hollywood. Shoot a lot of video material and then cut and mix then coming to the editing. If you have a Mac, as I have, the iMovie app is an excellent editing program. For Microsoft-based computers, I recommend Windows Movie Maker. Of the total time to make a video, I spend, I would say, more than 50% of the time to edit the final video. As you discover the vast editing possibility, you will spend more time in front of the editing screen, I promise you after every video you make. You get sort of addicted to making uh, tricky and nice videos. Talking about the picture, what kind of equipment do you need? In fact, you can use your smartphone, nothing else. Today's smartphones have an excellent resolution and you don't need to invest any money into expensive cameras. In, ca in my case, I have my Nikon SLR camera since before and I feel very comfortable using it. However, part of the movie, as for example, this shortcut you can see right now, it has been taken with my iPhone. A tripod is of course the best solution to get your camera positioned the right way but you don't need to make the investment just look after that your camera or smartphone is standing on a solid base if you're taking a video of a person be aware of how to position the camera it should be slightly above your eyes If you put the camera below the line of your f face, it will get an unrealistic dimension, like in this case. If it is above your head, 
you will get an angle where you also will look different in comparison to the reality. Let's move on to the next cornerstone, and that is light. In this video, we are only going to talk about natural light, which I highly recommend to start with. Later on, you can invest in electrical artificial light, which will open up a diverse world of possibilities. A lot of people think that a sunny day is the best time to shoot a video. In fact, it is completely the opposite. Sunlight will give you very sharp borders between light and shadow and can be tricky to handle even when you are doing the editing. A cloudy day like today gives you a smooth and natural light. There are some things though that you have to consider. Look after that the main light is coming in from the same direction as your lens is pointing towards the object. If you get the light from behind the object you will appear like a black shadow. As always, play around with different angles of the light and find out yourself what is best for you and the atmosphere and the environment you would like to create. Sound. You can make a fantastic video from a picture point of view, but it will all fall down to the scrap category if you fail with the sound. When it comes to sound, it is, in my opinion, the only part where you should invest a certain amount of money. The inbuilt sound devices on cameras and smartphones, they are not good enough. I use this one, my Tascam recorder. I bought it from Amazon some years ago, and if I don't remember wrong, I paid something like $75 for it. So it is an investment we all can afford. The next thing is to use a microphone of high quality and especially if you are shooting the video outside, put on a simple noise reducer like this one. Talking about sound, it's also good to speak about the script and how to present what you're going to say in the video. Some people just have the talent to talk in front of other people, others don't. And even if you haven't any problem to speak in front of other people, you don't get the needed flow that you should have in a good video. What do I mean by that? Even if I speak in my native language, I have the bad habit to talk with a lot of, you know, ah uh, and uh, when you're searching for the right word. The other thing is the language. As you have noticed, English is my first language. And the first obstacle holding me back from doing videos in English was the language. But you just have to ignore that part and instead make it to your particular strength and footprint. Imagine, for example, Arnold Schwarzenegger speaking English without his German accent. It wouldn't be Arnold Schwarzenegger. His accent is part of his brand and personality. Summing up all this speaking issue, I implemented something that wasn't recommended by any of the video gurus out there. But on the other hand, why should they always be correct what the gurus are saying? Use common sense and do what you feel is best for you. I use a teleprompter. And if I don't read the text word by word every time, it's always there as a guide if I get lost. It's very, very simple. Download an app that you can find for free on the internet. In my case, I use something called Speech. But on the internet, you will find a lot of different software. I use my iPad as my screen and I let the text scroll at the pace that I feel comfortable with. I hang up the screen just below the camera lens and if you need, you can just read the text. It requires some training, that is for sure, but it works very well for me. Now we come to 
editing, the fourth cornerstone to keep in mind is actually editing. Even with a poor video with good picture, light and sound quality, you can make miracles when sitting down around the editing table. With my iMovie I can zoom in and I can zoom out the way I prefer. I can squeeze in other images related to the content as you have seen in this video and as you can see right now when talking about editing in iMovie. As the sound is separated from the picture, it's easy to play around with different images. You can put on background music and create the environment you want for your particular scenes. Well, the possibilities are literally endless. Uploading. The fifth and last part of this video is up. Loading. Now you have got a video that you are happy with and it must be available for your audience out there. Once you have got your video in an mp4 format, which is the best format I would say, it can be a huge file that can be tricky to upload to wherever you want it to be. What you need to do first is to compress the video. And there is a fantastic software called Handbrake you can download for free. Of course it comes with a tutorial and instructions and it's very very easy to use. Once you have the compressed mp4 format ready, the next step would be to upload the video to your YouTube account. Here you can see how I upload this video. It takes a minute or two depending on the size. If you prefer you can decide to add a pre-designed thumbnail as I do here or otherwise YouTube will give a choice of three random shots from your video as your thumbnail. If you want you can use the YouTube version of your video as it is and just put it into your blog post or wherever you want it to be published. However, I prefer to go one step further and use the software Your Tube Player that you can use for free when becoming a member of the Six Figure Mentors. As you can see, I just take the URL from my YouTube video and process it in the software. Here I get various options and I use to make the video as clean and straightforward as possible. With the code I get when all is ready, I can embed the ready-made video into where I want it to be, like in this case on my blog post. Further down in this article you can find the different links to the pages I have mentioned in the video. And if you feel that this short vi new video tutorial video has been useful, join my blog and get more useful tips that can be of help in your effort to be an online marketer. Maybe you have friends and colleagues that you think would be in need of the tips given here. Tag them and spread the message. Have a great, great time with your video blogging and feel free to tag me on your next creation. I'm still a newbie. You are probably also a newbie. But together we will be strong enough to make an important noise in the growing video market.